during the war on drugs, President Duterte admitted under oath that he alone takes full legal responsibility for the actions of his subordinates who were acting under his orders. In other words, the former president has acknowledged his role in the thousands of deaths that took place under his watch. He also echoed the Nanlaban narrative that was persistently used by police officers to justify deaths during supposed police operations. This admission is significant as it highlights that cases are now ripe for filing against those responsible for the extra judicial killings during the drug war. Duterte has admitted, has committed <clears throat> to take responsibility and face the consequences of this act as mandated by our laws. It is now up to the proper authorities to consider this statement carefully and ascertain the criminal liability of the responsible individuals, whether under the concept of command responsibility or conspiracy. These cases could include crimes against humanity, as penalized under Republic Act Number 9851, the Philippine Act on Crimes Against International Humanitarian Law, genocide, and other crimes against humanity. That's the title of the uh, Republic Act. And other criminal laws, not to mention the potential jurisdiction of the ICC. Section 10 of RA 9851 establishes the principle of command responsibility which holds superiors liable for crimes committed by their subordinates if they had knowledge of the crimes and failed to take necessary actions to prevent or repress them. The killings order under former President Duterte's so-called war on drugs meet all the elements of willful killing as a crime against humanity under Section 6 of RA 9851. The facts are clear. Medyo mahaba ito, you know? First, willful killings affected thousands of civilians, with the International Criminal Court estimating between 12,000 and 30,000 deaths between July 2016 and March 2019 alone. Second, the victims were primarily civilians, suspected by police authorities to be involved in drug-related activities. Third, these killings occurred in a widespread systematic attack across various cities, municipalities, and provinces throughout the Philippines. Fourth, these killings were executed under a state or organized poli organizational policy, namely the anti-drug campaign of former President Duterte, which included a national system of rewards within the police hierarchy. Duterte's admission <clears throat> in the Senate hearing made spontaneously and as an admission against interest is binding upon him. This must be recognized as evidence for all present and future cases relating to the war on drugs. What we witnessed during the former president's testimony was a shocking normalization of brutality, a normalization of death, and a disregard for due process that has infected our legal institutions. Duterte's nonchalant attitude towards life itself lies at the root of the thousands of deaths during his term. His casual language, his swearing in formal proceedings, mirrors the erosion of his standards in his administration where the value of life itself was cast aside. Nakakalungkot na hindi nare-realize ni PRRD ang consequences ng mga sinasabi niya. Carelessly worded statements posted on Facebook by a normal citizen are called rants. Carelessly worded statements spoken by a president are called policy. And his, and his coarse language, his casual swearing even in formal settings, which we saw again and again yesterday in the Senate, mirrors this erosion of his standards. What we witnessed during his time in office was not just a disregard for societal norms 
and the standards of the office he once held. It was a disregard for human life. It was a dismissal of the processes and safeguards designed to protect the life and liberty of our kababayan. Kita ninyo, naging katanggap-tanggap ang pagumura, ang pagpatay, naging katanggap-tanggap, pinapalakpakan siya. Are these the values we want to pass on to our children? The recent Senate hearing also laid bare another troubling truth. It is nearly impossible to hold a fair and objective inquiry when those who should be testifying are instead influencing the very proceedings. When resource persons are faced with figures like Senator Bato de la Rosa, there is no level playing field. The environment is one of intimidation designed to silence or steer the narrative. Any witness who dares to speak out is at risk of being bullied or dismissed. Oh, oh. my right to Senator Bato and even Senator Go to defend themselves. That is their right. A right denied to the thousands who could not defend themselves. Senator Bato, ay kung talagang sila ay matatapang, kung naniniwala kayo na wala kayong kasalanan, then show some real delicadeza and appear to our hearings where you, your statements can be challenged and cross-examined. Mga kababayan, Yesterday, we also saw how the former president was given a platform to rewrite history, to gaslight the nation by justifying acts that led to the thousands of deaths. This was not a hearing in the service of truth. It was a forum for denial, for him to rationalize the indefensible. Psalms 9, 9 to 10 reminds us, and I quote, the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. End of God. The voices of the oppressed cry out for justice. And we stand here knowing that the Lord is on the side of those who seek righteousness and truth. We will not be swayed by these tactics, nor will we be deterred from seeking accountability. We are committed to ensuring that the victims of the war on drugs receive justice. The former president may attempt to does responsibility, but we will work tirelessly to hold him accountable for the lives lost, the families shattered, and the trust broken under his administration. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you, Chairman uh, Abante and uh, Fernandez. Uh, kicking off uh, today's uh, uh, first question, uh, we'd like to recognize uh, Meralis Moras from PTV4. Hi, good morning po, uh, Chair Abante, Chair Fernandez. Uh, sir, I understand may mga statement na rin po tayo kahapon denying the statements of uh, Grijaldo. Pero just to be clear, para mas maipaliwanag lang po sa ating mga kababayan, so may nangyari nga po bang private meeting uh, about dun sa statement nga with Grijaldo and uh, ano po kaya yung uh, reason kung meron man na bakit siya kailangan ipatawag in private si Grijaldo po Yan mahaba yung sinabi mo ako nang sasagot uh, Chairman Labante uh, Well, uh, unang-una talagang there was a uh, incident na talagang uh, pinatawag namin siya pero not on our own, own volition because it was uh, Colonel Garma as uh, what I'm saying sa mga interview sa akin that uh, as na kausapin si uh, Colonel uh, Grijaldo kasi si Colonel Grijaldo uh, according to uh, Colonel Garma uh, is a friend of her so uh, sabi namin, tama-tama, andun si Colonel Grijaldo, so tawagin na natin. So it was at the back of the Quadcom. So nang kinausap namin siya, um, sabi ko nga kay uh, Chairman Abante, kausapin natin kasi nga kaibigan daw, uh, uh, siya makakapag-confirm ng mga affidavit na ginawa niya sa supplemental. So uh, what we did was, um, yung lawyer, sinabi namin na pumunta para in the spirit of transparency. Kasi mahirap naman na, na kami lang. Kasi we always see to it na dapat talagang uh, merong kasama. As a matter of fact, yun din ang sinabi ko sa media that prior to the Quadcom uh, hearing, nagkausap kami ni Colonel Garma. 
And uh, I asked the permission of the chairman uh, to be with me. And uh, he accompanied me para at least uh, transparent talaga yung usapan. Uh, unfortunately, yung sinasabi niyang coercion and harassment, uh, it never happened. Talagang wala namang coercion na nangyari. nangyari. And ako, natatandaan ko kasi merong isang tao na naandun sa loob pa eh. Aside from from the two witnesses na at the two uh, lawyers ni uh, Garma, si, Ch si chairman, saka ako, and then somebody, na kilala ko sa sa muka, hindi ko lang matandaan kung sino na staff yon. So, we were discussing yung yung I think it was number 17 na sinabi ko ito. Na, uh, sabi ni Garma, makukonfirm mo daw yung sa reward uh, system. Naku, wala po kaming alam dyan. Wala po ako alam dyan. So, pinoyed ko pa yung iba, yung 1999. Tama yung sinasabi niya. Pero yung kinuwers namin siya at uh, hinaras namin siya, kasi ang coercion talagang gagamitan mo ng threat eh. Gagamitan mo siya ng force eh. Kung ginamitan natin siya ng force during that time, di ba? there was... It's still a lot of time for for him to 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 ano to to react, eh, no? Eh, unfortunately, hindi niya yung ginawa. At, at at the same time, we cannot do that. Alam mo, it's so unethical for the two of us not telling, ano, yung sa mga chairman like si Ace, si uh, 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 Chairman Akop, sa kasi uh, Congressman Paduano about do sa sa issue yon. Kung pipiliti namin siyang magsalita, and it will be against sa ating uh, procedure na to bet first yung mga magsasalita para at least sigurado tayo. So yun yung tunay na nangyari. But of course, may hindi ako sinasabi na issue na yung reason kung bakit niya, bakit niya ginawa yun. Well, yun yung, sa, yun yung aking analysis dun sa pangyayari. Bakit nila ginagawa to against us? Well, unang-una, demolition yun. Pangalawa, it's, a, um, it's an attack against me and uh, well, against you. And uh, most likely, uh, they really wanted to discredit the whole of the Quadcom. Mm -hmm. And it's quite unfair no, to all of the members of the Quadcom, especially the chairman. Ano? Um, what happened nang in-invite invite namin in, with our own volition na, na to talk to, uh, to uh, Colonel Grijaldo because it was asked by uh, Colonel Karma. And sa amin, yun na nakita kong uh, uh, naging repercussion ng uh, ginawa namin. But of course, in every every um, uh, betting that we are doing, we always see to it that there are people around. Opo. Sorry, follow up lang, sir, dun sa sinabi nga yung uh, uh, nakikita nyo itong ay demolition. Uh, ano rin po yung masasabi nyo na paulit-ulit sinabi ni former President Duterte na uh, subordination of perjury at sabi nga niya maghahain pa siya ng kaso against uh, about this against you po sir. Uh, ano pong masasabi niyo ron at uh, bakit po ba nung meeting wala ring abogado mismo kasi ang nasabi niyo po ang may abogado si Garma but po walang abogado si Grijaldo. Kasi betting process pa lamang yun eh. Alam mo sa kongreso kinakausap muna namin and then kapag nalaman namin na uh, pwede nating i-validate yung mga sinasabi niya then the lawyers will come out. So, that time, ano, wala namang lawyer na dala si Grijaldo eh, during that time. Eh. Ang may, may lawyer doon is si Garma. Hmm. And that's the reason why we ask na kung pwede yung dalawang lawyer pumunta doon para at least transparent yung usapan. Now, kung nagsabi siya na, yes sir, kinokontrol ko po yan, alam ko po yung reward system. And then, bring your lawyer. Yun ang ano namin, eh, yun ang sistema ng uh, procedure namin sa betting. Eh. Kasi otherwise, kung... Uh, Una pala may co-coerce na namin siya. <laughs> Alam namin, babalikan kami niyan. We, 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 we're not like that. And uh, you have to remember that uh, we have a lot of evidences already. Uh, as a matter of fact, yung ating pong uh, sinasabi natin na corroborative, no? Na corroborate na eh. Actually, hindi naman kay Colonel Garman nagsimula yan eh. Doon sa dalawang PDL. Na kinarabrate ni Jimmy Portalesa, ni kunarabrate ni, ni Warden Padilla. Saka lang dumating si Colonel Garma. Saka lang dumating si Commissioner uh, Leonardo. So now, sinasabi ni Garma na ito, meron pang isang kaibigan ako na magkukorabrate doon sa mga sinabi ko. Eh, well, actually, kahit wala siya, hindi nga siya. <laughs> hindi nga siya pinag-uusapan namin. Kaya nagulat ako nang nandun lang siya, nagsasalita siya against us. Well, script nila yun eh. <laughs> Bahala sila doon. Well, uh, panindigan niya kung anong magiging repercussion sa kanya. Dahil nga, oh, we will not take that sitting down. Of course, yung kanyang apidabit na kinors, hinaras, and under oath siya, mabigat yun. And now, uh, we will do something. And this is will be collective. I mean, not me, not him, but the whole of the Quadcom. Because the integrity of the Quadcom is at stake here. 
and we have done nothing wrong. Sir, sorry, yung sa statement lang po ni uh, pres uh, former President Duterte about uh, subordination of perjury, ano pong masasabi nyo dun na his, uh, he, he even said na magpa-file siya ng case about this? Well, ako, uh, carry on, di, we will uh, take action on that. Kung magpa-file sila sa amin, then yun ang, ano, yun ang mga, mga repercussion of the things that we are doing eh, for the Quadcom and for the Filipino people. And uh, if this is the, uh, the way that we need to act on certain um, things that happen, then we will, uh, we will uh, confront the, the issue.